Mars rovers have a habit of picking up rocks in their open wheels and carrying them long distances. The latest Perseverance hitchhiker came on board three months ago and rode along for nearly two kilometers. But then the going got tough on this episode of Mars Guy. Regular viewers of this channel are familiar with the comings and goings of small rocks in the wheels of Perseverance. The first such hitchhiker on Mars was a potato-sized rock that was big enough to jam the dinner plate-sized wheel of the Spirit rover. But potato rocks, as they became known, are no concern for the much bigger wheels of Perseverance. Here's Mars Guy for scale. In fact, there's something vaguely endearing about the passengers that harmlessly ride along for months at a time. 15 months in the case of the first one. I didn't report on the latest hitchhiker because it came on board at a time when Perseverance was struggling through the gnarly, rock-strewn terrain of the margin unit. Reporting on the struggles of Perseverance seemed more important. The potato onboarding came just as the team decided to abandon a planned route in favor of what was hoped to be smoother terrain on the floor of Noret Vivalis. And thankfully, it was. Perseverance was again able to do 100 to 200 meter drives after struggling to do a few tens of meters in the margin unit. It was during this period that Perseverance encountered a slab of rock filled with sulfate veins and tiny leopard-like spots that are potential microbial biosignatures. With a sample of that rock collected, Perseverance moved on across the floor of the ancient river channel and then drove out. As I reported in the previous episode, the plan is to drive up and over the mountainous rim of Jezero Crater to reach science targets on the other side. It's more than three kilometers just to the top, with slopes up to 23 degrees. Perseverance started this journey on Sol 1244. The hitchhiker rode out the first and second legs of the twisting and turning route taken by the self-driving rover as it dodged perceived hazards. Then, somewhere along the third leg, the hitchhiker was ejected, probably when just the right slope and wheel angle conspired to upset the three months of dynamic equilibrium it had experienced. Or maybe it just wanted out. The next drive proved to be relatively long and straight. In fact, this would be the best drive of the coming set of five. And here, looking back, you can start to get the feel of the slope Perseverance is facing. If you view this on a large screen, you might get a vaguely vertiginous sensation. And it's here that the tracks start to show the wheel slip that Perseverance has been experiencing. Note how compressed the tread pattern is, and also the lateral slip. In the coming drives, Perseverance struggled between the smooth but slippery material to the west and firm but rugged and rocky material to the east. The drive on Sol 1253 ended after only three meters, apparently after Perseverance detected excessive wheel slip and aborted the drive. The next and most recent drive apparently was intended to get Perseverance back on firmer ground. This was successful, but it ended less than 18 meters later when Perseverance drove up and on to an intimidating pile of boulders. So here we are, facing a literal uphill climb that looks like it could get worse in terms of wheel slip based on the smooth appearance of some of the terrain ahead. And that smooth terrain probably won't have many rocks available to get on board the struggle bus. <laughs>